Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Kevin Johnson. I'm an ecologist for the Association to Preserve Cape Cod, or uh, APCC. Um, we're a small environmental nonprofit operating in uh, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, um, with goals to uh, protect, uh, preserve, preserve, and restore um, the natural resources of the Cape uh, with a strong uh, priority towards um, water quality. And my uh, main position is the coordinator for our cyanobacteria monitoring program. Um, this is a region-wide effort uh, to sample ponds across Cape Cod um, for cyanobacteria concentrations uh, throughout the summer. Uh, we work with uh, town uh, officials, um, many uh, different pond coalitions with um, you know, citizen scientists that help us collect our samples and uh, communicate our findings. And in this presentation, I'll, I'd like to give an overview uh, for what we do, our struggles and um, our goals for the future. And in the context of this group, kind of the takeaway, um, you know, would be just uh, take, taking the CMC methods, um, you know, we've, we've expanded it over, you know, a, a very kind of large, decently large reg region uh, with, with a lot of help um, working with a lot of different organizations um, and, you know, any efforts or possibilities to, you know, take some of the things that we do well and transplant it to, you know, other areas, um, give input and kind of spread, you know, the success of this model that we've had, um, you know, would, would, be, uh, would be great. Um, so, so an overview, uh, we follow the CMC um, methods pretty closely with the cyanoscope and cyan monitoring uh, sections. Uh, we take our whole lake water and BFC samples, um, also le some less than 50 uh, samples as well. Um, and we perform microscopy, uh, determine dominance and uh, perform uh, fluorometry as well. Um, you know, with with the samples that we collect um, with our plankton net and integrated tube um, from shore from about a um, waist deep or to thigh deep water uh, for the most part uh, and we monitor on a bi-weekly basis uh, from May to about October or so um, for all the ponds in our network um, when conditions arise that uh, that require us to uh, sample on a higher frequency, uh, that being you know, around uh, bloom conditions or elevated uh, expected toxicity, uh, will increase that frequency to weekly or you know, higher than that. Um, and we'll also you know, be proactive in uh, communicating you know, what, what we're seeing and what's happening with the partners in our network, which are our pond coalitions um, you know, and, and health officials uh, for the towns that we operate in. Uh, the purpose that we serve and kind of what makes us successful is that we have a very quick turnaround time for our results. Um, you know, oftentimes we're able to have our data in hand to send out to our partners. You know, if, if we sample in the morning, we might have it ready by that afternoon um, to get the word out and the, the results out to the people who need it and the town officials, you know, to make their decisions, um, you know, if, if there's ever a time where, uh, um, you know, and any kind of advisory or, or closure or you know use restriction um, may be required or, or anything else that the town might want to take action on. Um, and also uh, being a nonprofit, uh, working together with so many other uh, organizations and citizen scientists um, and working through grants, we're able to keep our costs very low, um, you know, to just make, make this whole process more efficient and to maximize the amount of um, cyanobacteria monitoring that we're able to provide and extend the coverage and the research um, that we can do, you know, as, as far as we can, um, given the limited resources that we have. Um, another uh, great uh, kind of um, ability of, of our program is that by tracking BFC data on a biweekly basis, we're often able to forecast uh, bloom formation, um, which is great to be, be proactive um, in that when we see exponential growth begin to occur in the BFC or bloom forming colony um, data, that can signal us to increase our sampling frequency, uh, reach out to our town officials, um, and you know, be, be ahead of it rather than you know, the bloom appears and um, you know, then, then take action. 
Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't always happen that way, but we've had quite a number of successes where we have been able to find those blooms ahead of time. Um, and then also we uh, try to, to the best of our ability, um, do some microcystin analysis in-house uh, through regressions um, in part developed um, by uh, Nancy Leland and Jim Haney on the call. Um, uh, one of their papers, they've they analyzed uh, a number of ponds um, for you know genus specific um, you know toxicity to um, phycocyanin concentrations. Um, we've kind of adapted it as a as a screening tool um, for you know estimating uh, microcystin concentrations. And then when possible as well, and when funding is available, we also try to you know, integrate the Abraxas uh, toxin strip tests for microcystin um, so to just you know, improve the amount of data we have to um, deliver to our partners and um, public health officials. So this brings me to our communication. Um, you know, as far as the public health aspect of all this, it's, it's huge and getting that data to the public health officials um, to be able to make their determinations, um, what action to take. Um, you know, we, we try to get our results over to them as soon as possible and incorporate all these other metrics um, so they can make informed decisions. Uh, we also share our part our, with our partners, our results and a uh, bi-weekly report um, that they can share with their communities. Um, you know, a, a hindrance of, um, you know, at times when, you know, say the, uh, a town posts a use re restriction for a pond, uh, just at a, a town landing, um, you know, there might be a number of residents that never really interact with that town landing and aren't really aware of, you know, if, if a significant bloom has formed. Um, so with our partners there, uh, they communicate our findings, um, spread education and awareness, and, you know, bring to attention, you know, um, and, you know, the ways that they can to uh, the members of their community, um, you know, when uh, things are harmful. And likewise, when um, we find, uh, you know, you no know, kind of cyanobacteria concentrations of concern. And we also have an interactive map, which we have on our website, which we update daily with all of our results. Um, so people can also just log in on that and see everything that we're finding. Uh, we also work with Nancy and Jim and a number of other organizations, like Brewster Ponds Coalition, uh, the National Seashore, um, and Falmouth Water Stewards and others on um, looking towards research efforts with cyanobacteria and working together. Um, and our mission is to serve, you know, the entirety of Cape Cod and all the towns and have good coverage throughout the region. As there is a, a thousand ponds on the Cape or so, um, and just the more that we can cover, uh, the better. Uh, so, so our history, we, this whole thing was initiated in um, 2017. At first, it was identifying, you know, uh, the need uh, for this kind of work to be done. After uh, speaking with Hillary and, and Nancy, and seeing, you know, how we would potentially do this, and then uh, talk with uh, towns and different organizations about what kind of cyanobacteria monitoring might already be done, um, and seeing that, you know, for many towns in the Cape, um, there wasn't much being done. Um, we saw, you know, an avenue for us to step in and help out. Um, and start developing town partnerships, either in a contractual basis or working with towns to spread the, the data we provide to them. Um, as I said, work with these number of uh, pond associations and integrate their volunteers to help us collect samples and also to spread awareness and um, spread the data that we're collecting. Um, upgrade our, our reporting structure through biweekly reports um, using our map, which has been, of course, a great tool. Um, and just, you know, continually looking to uh, better our communication and use the right wording um, and everything to make sure, you know, what our findings are, are put to use and that everything's done in the right way. And like I said, also then get into more research, apply to specific grants with, um, you know, UNH and some of the other organizations I mentioned um, and continually look to expand as we start in 2017 with just a couple ponds 2018, about maybe 10 to 15 ponds. And in this past year, we got to around 60 ponds um, with uh, some COVID constraints. So um, as you can see here, um, the as we kind of see ourselves from where we started, where we were just collecting samples and you know doing our monitoring, um, the key to this whole program has kind of been working together with with all of our different groups and kind of just serving as as the hub for you know mostly uh, lab work and for the um, spreading of results and interpretation of results to 
you know, all our towns. And as you can see here, these are quite a few of the um, partners that we work with across the Cape. Um, and it's it, it's really effective for us to be able to uh, achieve what we want, you know, is just better expansion and, you know, more ponds being covered for cyanobacteria marring, but also for these groups, um, you know, being involved and making sure that there's, you know, adequate coverage and their towns um, working together with us um, on research when, you know, there might be uh, research needs and across the Cape and, um, you know, also for us to, as I said, share information and our findings with these groups so they can use their communities and membership to sp spread awareness and um, spread whatever findings we come to. Um, so, so this is our, this is on our website. We have a, an interactive um, cyanobacteria map where I post the results um, in kind of a color-coded three-tier system, um, you know, blue, low, yellow, moderate, red, high. Um, we, we created these tiers kind of uh, looking and um, at, you know, what other organizations were doing and um, setting them up, uh, you know, alongside uh, state standards. Um, so low is, um, you know, most of the ponds are for most of the year, which is, you know, no kind of concerning um, trends or concentrations for cyanobacteria. Um, moderate is when you might be starting to see the exponential growth. Um, we want to increase our sampling frequency. Um, toxin concentrations might, um, you know, be past kind of the drinking water standards and could be harmful to pets if ingested um, in particular. And then the high level is where we're at, um, you know, the Massachusetts regulatory standards, which, you know, when, when we're seeing a bloom, visible bloom formation um, or, you know, exponential growth leading to it, um, uh, toxin microsystem concentrations at, are expected to exceed the 14 parts per billion thresholds that our state has. Um, and, you know, in, in, in that realm, you know, we're, we're working with our, our town partners and just making sure, you know, the word gets out there to them. And uh, you can also see in the, in the bottom right, um, we also include a kind of pop up with not just kind of the, the tier for, for what that pond was given, but also include, you know, what cyanobacteria was dominant, uh, water temperature, sample location, and how the pond has done recently. Uh, so some of our struggles, it's always, you know, funding availability um, year to year. We hope to continually expand and you know um, do what we can to grow and always do more. Um, but you know it's 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 a year to year thing um, and just kind of um, trying to maintain what we do each year and see if we can grow. Uh, during COVID nineteen, in particular, um, it was it was a tough year this year because of we weren't able to have access to that big volunteer network. We were collecting all the samples ourselves um, with our our COVID guidelines. And you know that really limited what we were able to do, um, and you know the amount that we were able to expand um, limited our, our funding um, because of you know all the travel that we had to do. Um, so you know it's it's looking ho hopefully you know will be you know looking better this year, uh, but that was definitely a struggle. Uh, and also, uh, as I said, we hope to and like to include uh, you know the Braxis uh, microcystin uh, toxin kits when possible. But that level of funding is also something that's year to year and trying to figure out how we can implement it. Um, but we applied to grants to try to see if we can implement it to the best we can and you know, when blooms are forming to have them at the ready. And then also just uh, communication of risks, as I said, you know, uh, an, another issue is for people who you know, aren't aware of uh, the issue of cyanobacteria or aren't connected with um, with the town or the pond associations in our network. I'm um, just trying to get the word out well when blooms form uh, so people can limit their exposure to these ponds um, and you know at least make informed decisions and uh, not be in the dark about this. So as for our goals, um, we're looking to monitor jump from 60 ponds to 150 ponds in 2021, um, largely with bringing volunteers back and you know, um, a safe capacity. Uh, we're bringing on help from uh, the, 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 our county um, beach sampling staff has offered, you know, to help us with our sampling efforts. Um, so the, the hope is to get there around 150 ponds. We, we hope to get there. Um, the town of Barnstable also samples, you know, around 40 ponds themselves. So 
if we can get to close to 200 ponds monitored in 2021, as I mentioned, there's about a thousand ponds on Cape, 20% of them monitored would be great for us um, just to have that good coverage. Um, continuing our, our commu communication and, and education to the best that we can is, is a you know, continual goal and putting our data to good use. And then we have some research efforts that we're looking into um, with uh, Nancy and Jim and um, BPC and the National Seashore and other, other orga organizations that include, um, you know, looking at river herring and cyanobacteria interactions that, um, you know, Na Nancy could speak on. And on that too, we're looking at pond to sea cyanobacteria interactions, um, migration from, you know, these impaired ponds, um, cyanobacteria transported to estuaries, um, also through biological means like, you know, alewife populations. And we're also looking to do more analysis into the spread of anatoxin on the Cape um, in the ponds. We haven't really um, measured it well and, you know, feel, feel that it could use uh, some more um, some more attention on the Cape, uh, given we have of, uh, a lot of delicious from dominant ponds and it, it, it could be something of interest and shed some light on, on um, some cool stuff. And then, uh, you know, just continue to promote uh, water quality monitoring, um, including nutrient analysis um, is something we're, we're hoping to promote uh, involving the community, um, talking with teachers and students and getting them, them involved in some local uh, science work has been a cool thing uh, to integrate and just uh, continue to spread the education and awareness to our community. So just wanna thank everybody. And if you wanna, um, catch up and uh, talk more about all this, um, you can reach me at my email listed here. Thank you.